When people hear the word rust, they often think of old abandoned cars, neglected metal fences, or tools that have been left out in the rain. On the other hand, the term corrosion might bring to mind industrial equipment slowly deteriorating or ships battling the relentless assault of seawater. While many people use the two terms interchangeably, rust and corrosion are not exactly the same thing. Rust is actually a specific type of corrosion, and understanding the difference between the two can help us appreciate the science behind how materials break down, why it matters in everyday life, and what can be done to prevent it. In this video, we're going to explore the similarities, the differences, and the bigger picture of rust versus corrosion. Let's explore right here on History of Simple Things. Let's start by defining corrosion in the broadest sense. Corrosion is a natural process that involves the deterioration of materials, usually metals, due to chemical reactions with their environment. It's essentially nature's way of returning refined metals back to their more stable mineral forms, like oxides, sulfides, or hydroxides. When humans extract metals such as iron, aluminum, or copper from ores, we put in a great deal of energy to make them stable and useful. Over time, however, these metals want to revert to their lower energy state, which often means bonding with oxygen, sulfur, or other elements around them. This tendency is what we call corrosion, and it can occur in countless different forms depending on the material and the environment. Rust, on the other hand, is a very specific example of corrosion, and it applies only to iron and its alloys, such as steel. Rust forms when iron reacts with oxygen and moisture in the environment, creating hydrated iron oxides. You've probably seen the reddish-brown flakes that form on the surface of old iron gates or steel beams. That's rust. The chemical reaction starts when water and oxygen penetrate the surface of iron. Water, especially if it contains dissolved salts or acids, acts as an electrolyte, allowing electrons to move and fueling the electrochemical process. The result is a flaky, brittle material that not only looks unpleasant, but also weakens the structural integrity of the iron object. One of the most important differences between rust and corrosion lies in the scope of the terms. Corrosion is a broad umbrella term that applies to all metals, while rust is limited to iron. For example, when copper corrodes, it develops a green patina called copper carbonate, often seen on old statues or roofs. When aluminum corrodes, it forms a thin whitish oxide layer that actually protects the underlying metal from further damage. But when iron rusts, the rust layer does not act as a protective barrier. Instead, it flakes off and exposes fresh metal underneath, which then continues to rust. That's why rust can be so destructive compared to some other forms of corrosion. Another way to look at the difference is through the environments in which they occur. Corrosion can happen under many different conditions. Exposure to oxygen, chemicals, moisture, salts, or even biological organisms. For example, chemical plants and oil refineries constantly battle corrosion caused by aggressive chemicals in pipes and tanks. Ships, offshore rigs, and bridges fight against corrosion from saltwater environments. Even underground pipelines can corrode due to reactions with soil and bacteria. Rust, however, specifically requires iron, oxygen, and water. Without moisture, iron won't rust as quickly, which is why dry climates often preserve iron objects far longer than humid ones. Now let's consider the consequences of rust and corrosion in real life. Both processes can lead to costly repairs, equipment failures, and even dangerous accidents. 
Rust can weaken steel reinforcements in buildings and bridges, leading to structural collapses if not managed properly. One infamous example is the collapse of the Silver Bridge in 1967, which was partly attributed to corrosion-related failures. Corrosion in general costs industries and governments billions of dollars every year due to maintenance, replacements, and safety precautions. It affects everything from automobiles and aircraft to water pipes and electronics. That's why engineers and scientists spend so much time studying corrosion and developing ways to slow it down. Speaking of prevention, there are many strategies to combat both rust and corrosion. For iron and steel, coatings such as paint, oil, or galvanization can create a protective barrier between the metal and the environment. Stainless steel is an alloy that contains chromium, which forms a thin, stable oxide layer that prevents rust from spreading. For other metals, corrosion-resistant alloys or protective films can help. Cathodic protection is another powerful technique, often used in pipelines and ships, where a more reactive metal is used as a sacrificial anode. This metal corrodes instead of the main structure, sparing it from damage, preventing moisture accumulation, controlling pH levels, and using inhibitors in industrial processes are also effective ways to manage corrosion. It's also worth pointing out that not all forms of corrosion are purely destructive. In some cases, corrosion can actually be beneficial or even intentional. For example, the patina that forms on copper or bronze statues not only adds a unique aesthetic, but also protects the metal underneath from further deterioration. Aluminum's oxide layer, as mentioned earlier, serves as a protective skin. These are examples of stable corrosion products that shield the material, unlike rust, which is unstable and keeps eating away at the iron beneath it. To sum everything up, rust and corrosion are closely related, but they are not identical. Corrosion is the broad process by which metals deteriorate through chemical interactions with their environment, while rust is a specific type of corrosion that only happens to iron and its alloys when they react with oxygen and moisture. Rust is particularly harmful because it doesn't provide a protective barrier, unlike some other forms of corrosion. Understanding these differences is more than just a matter of vocabulary. It's crucial for industries, engineers, and even everyday people who want to protect tools, vehicles, and structures from damage. So the next time you see a rusty nail or a corroded copper pipe, you'll know that while both are the result of nature reclaiming materials, the processes and outcomes aren't quite the same. Rust is just one face of the larger phenomenon of corrosion, and both remind us of the powerful role chemistry plays in shaping the world around us. Thank you for watching. If you have suggestions for our next video, feel free to share them in the comments below. We'll be sure to give you an acknowledgement for your contribution. If you enjoyed this video, please check out our other bingeable channels. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history of simple things. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more stories woven through the smallest details.